Here's an easy way to impose a time limit on a specific quiz question in Articulate Storyline. Let's say I've got this question and I want to give the learner three tries, but let's say I also only want to give them 15 seconds to come up with the right answer. And if they don't, I want to consider the question wrong. So here's one way that we can do that. If we open up the question editor, you can see that right here for the attempts dropdown, I've set this to three, so that's where the three tries are coming from. And here are the learner's choices, car, motorcycle, bike, bus, and truck. Plus I've got this one choice here at the bottom, which is what I'm going to mark automatically if the learner runs out of time. I'm actually going to make this answer choice invisible to the learner unless they do run out of time. And if that happens, we're going to make it visible and we'll mark it and we'll prevent the learner from marking any other option. And we'll also show them a message letting them know that they ran out of time. So let's save and close out of here and we'll see how we do this. First I wanted to show you the layer panel down here in the lower right. Um, Storyline creates these layers for me automatically. One is the uh, correct feedback layer, another for incorrect, and then I've got this third layer here that the learner sees if they get the question wrong, but they still have some attempts left. Now normally these feedback layers don't look black like this. Usually you just see a message that kind of pops up over top of the question. Um, but since we have this time limit that we want to impose, I didn't want the learner to be able to hang out here on this feedback slide and see you know, the content of the question behind the feedback because when the layer appears, that pauses the timeline, which means it also pauses the time limit that I've placed on the question. So what I did is I just added this black rectangle here behind the content of my feedback layer. I also did a couple other things on my base layer. Remember this one answer choice here that I told you I wanted to be invisible initially? Well, here's how we do that. If we open up the panel below our slide, and then choose the states panel, you can see that the initial state of that object is set to hidden. This defaults to normal, but you can change it to hidden if you want to. And then you can use a trigger to tell Storyline when you want that item to become visible. And we'll see how to do that in a second. The other thing is on the timeline, if we move out here to the 15 second mark, you can see I've got this group of objects that is appearing on the timeline at the 15 second mark. Let me just turn the visibility on here so that you can see these items. It's pretty simple. There's um, just a partially transparent black rectangle. There's a text box and then there's this button that the learner clicks to be able to clear the layer and go back and answer the question. And this group of objects is kind of doing two things. Um, one thing is it tells the learner that their time is up. Another thing is it prevents them from clicking on any of these answer choices um, that they might have you know, seen before the, before the objects popped up on the screen. Now, if they do run out of time, we also want to disable the submit button if the time is up, right? Especially if we're allowing multiple attempts in the question. Because if the learner does run out of time, but they still have some attempts left, we want that submit button on the player to no longer allow them to do anything. Otherwise, if they do have some tries left, it would give them a chance to go back and look at the question again. So what we can do is create a simple true-false variable that notices whether the time is up or not. And if it is, we can attach a condition to our submit button. So let's talk about the variable first. I'm going to click on this little X here to open up our project variables. And here's the one that I created. It's real simple. Um, I called it times up. It's a true false variable and it's initially set to false because their time isn't up yet, you know, when they first get to the question slide. In fact, what I did is if we go to the slide master, on the slide master that I use for my questions, I also have a trigger here that no matter what, when the learner arrives at any question slide, I'm setting that variable equal to false so that it kind of resets every time they start a new question. The only time that, that variable changes to true is with this trigger that I've set right here. This is attached to that same group that comes on at 15 seconds. And what I've done is I've said adjust that variable called times up to a value of true when the timeline of that group of objects starts. So at the 15 second mark, times up will be equal to true. And then we use that for the basis of a condition that we applied to the trigger. So if we open this up, we're saying the usual trigger is you know, to submit the interaction when the user clicks submit, but we only want that to happen if times up is equal to false, if they haven't run out of time yet. So let's see how this behaves. We'll go ahead and preview our question. And let's say that we get the question wrong at first. So we get our incorrect and try again. And we'll get it wrong again. Incorrect, try again. And now if we go ahead and just speed through here to the end to where our time is up, we see that we have this new option that just got marked. Oops, I ran out of time. We can't mark anything and we can only click continue to move on. That's the only way that we can clear that message and move on to the next slide.